Now, just before we finish, I want to say something about hemorrhage in the elderly. Now, we know that when a young person starts to lose blood, there's a profound sympathetic response to bring about the peripheral vasoconstriction and the tachycardia. Well, old people are less able to mount this sympathetic response. The nervous system doesn't seem to work as effectively, and certainly the end organs don't respond to the sympathetic stimulation as effectively. So they might not get the tachycardic response a young person would get. The heart might stay relatively low, a relatively low heart rate for the amount of blood that they've lost. And they might not get the peripheral vasoconstriction that a younger person would get. So there's a reduced sympathetic response. They can't compensate as effectively. So the increase in heart rate that you would expect with a young person may not be present. They're unable to maintain their blood pressure with these compensatory mechanisms. This means that for a particular level of trauma, because an older person can't compensate, they're much more likely to suffer morbidity and mortality from that level of trauma. So there's more likely to be organ damage, there's more likely to be death. Whereas a young person can compensate, perhaps the older person can't compensate. And older people often suffer from atherosclerosis. They have atheroma of their vessels. And this means that if they are hypoperfused, as they might be in the early stages of shock and hemorrhage, and the blood vessel is narrow anyway, then there's even less blood getting through. So any hypoperfusion can be exacerbated by the presence of atheroma, meaning that the organ is going to be even more ischemic than it was otherwise, meaning it's even more likely to suffer tissue damage and reduced organ function. And then the diffusional capacity of the lungs is going to be reduced. The lung cannot take up as much oxygen as the younger person's lung. This is going to exacerbate hypoxemia and that's going to exacerbate hypoxic cellular injuries. So hypoxic damage complicating the hypoperfusion is going to happen at an earlier stage and the hypoxic damage is going to happen more quickly and be more profound than it would be in a younger person. And older people can also lose the ability to concentrate urine as effectively. So the kidneys can't preserve the water. So they have difficulty retaining water and that's going to make hypovolemia more likely to develop in the older person. And older people, of course, can suffer from many comorbidities. They can have other diseases at the same time. And these can all reduce the effectiveness of their organs, again, making the effects of hypoperfusion more profound and more significant. So for all of these reasons, for a particular level of trauma in an older person, the morbidity and the mortality is going to be higher. For a particular level of trauma, a younger person is much more likely to survive than an older person because the young person has got fit, able compensatory mechanisms, whereas the older person may be relatively unable to compensate. So what do we do about this? Well, it means in the elderly, prompt fluid resuscitation is absolutely vital. We need to put the fluids in before the organs become hypoperfused. Good oxygenation is absolutely vital. Any blood that is circulating around the body, we need to make sure it is as oxygen oxygenated as possible to prevent hypoxic tissue damage. So early recognition of clinical features and aggressive resuscitation measures in the old, old, older person and we're going to increase their chances of reducing morbidity and reducing mortality. But it is so much harder in an older person than it is in a younger, fitter person.